Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, lecture one of my Principles of Microeconomics uh, lecture series. These lectures are being developed uh, for use at Frederick Community College in uh, the spring 2020 semester, but uh, I hope they can be applied um, more generally. <clears throat> uh, this lecture is entitled In the Beginning. In the beginning, uh, man was created, and as the Christian story goes, we lived together in harmony in this uh, Garden of Eden, uh, where things were plentiful. But since that unfortunate event uh, in the Garden of Eden, mankind was kicked out and has had to struggle uh, to earn our living. This struggle is due to a fact that economists call scarcity. Scarcity does not imply uh, a rareness or anything like that. What scarcity in economics means is that there simply aren't enough goods and services, enough resources to satisfy all uh, wants. In other words, we have virtually infinite wants, but only limited resources. Uh, this fact of scarcity implies that there are trade-offs in the world. Uh, to do X, we need to give something up. Or to not do X, we need to give something up. Um, for example, the time that you could be spending, the time that you're spending watching this video, you could be doing something else, anything else. Uh, maybe you are multitasking, but even then, uh, you're dividing up your scarce attention and your scarce time amongst multiple ta uh, tasks. So scarcity implies trade-offs. It also implies uh, that there needs to be some sort of a rationing uh, going on. Rationing uh, how we spend our time, how we spend our resources, uh, things like that. So with this rationing, how, do we, how is it that we decide who gets what, how we spend our time, who we spend our time with, uh, things like that. Just think about uh, these things in your own life. How do I decide who I'm going to spend my time with? Uh, do you spend your time with your kids, with your wife? Uh, these are all decisions you have to make. Um, so, uh, for lack of a better word, things compete for your time. And likewise, competition exists for all scarce resources. Um, there are many forms of competition in this world for scarce resources. There can be outright violence. You know, I put my gun in your face and say, your money life. That's one way of competing for resources. Um, might makes right. Uh, there are other ways, such as political power, lobbying government, or um, uh, you know, some, some agency to, uh, to get resources that you otherwise would not necessarily be able to get. Discrimination is a way. It doesn't have to be uh, racial or sexual, but uh, age discrimination is a thing. Think about senior citizen discounts. That's a, that's a way. Or time discrimination. Matinee prices at the movie theater are cheaper than uh, evening prices. <clears throat> uh, we have first come, first serve uh, ways of allocating resources. Whoever is the first one there gets uh, the claim of the resource. There's a lottery method. We can try and determine who is most deserving. All these different ways to try and sort out uh, competition, uh, sort out who gets these resources and uh, different means of competing for them. Why are some forms of communication of, uh, excuse me, of uh, competition acceptable and other forms are not? Why is it, uh, for example, I can go and I can try and outbid uh, in money um, you for some resource, but I can't cut your hamstrings uh, or beat you up and steal it. Uh, the rules of the game uh, are vitally important. These things uh, like institutions and moral, uh, moral ethic, uh, moral foundations, moral responsibility, all play into uh, what kind of competition is acceptable and what kinds are not. Uh, we will go more in depth into uh, the types of competition uh, in a later lecture. For the purposes of this class, we're going to be focusing primarily on uh, market exchanges or cooperative uh, comp competitive cooperation. In other words, we're going to be dealing primarily with voluntary exchanges. 
voluntary exchanges. Two people or multiple get together and agree, I will do X for you, you will do uh, Y for me. More importantly, uh, they're going to decide who they deal with uh, through a form of competition. If I'm trying to get you to uh, deal with me, I'll say, I will X for you, and I will do it better uh, than the other guy. I will do X for you. That's the cooperation. We're cooperating here. I will do it better than the other guy. That's the competition. Cooperative co competition. Uh, why is this particular system acceptable? Why is this particular system moral? Uh, it's all over the world. We see it day in and day out, so much so uh, that we fail to really notice it, just like you really don't notice uh, breathing or blinking until somebody calls attention to that fact. You're probably very aware of your breathing and your blinking right now. Um, so to understand these processes, we need to do a little bit of a dive into uh, moral philosophy, which is probably not something you expected in an economics class. Uh, the next video in uh, this series will deal with um, moral philosophy and in particular a theory called atavism. Uh, it is a particular um, method of thinking, a particular uh, idea of how humanity has evolved, how uh, our moral systems have evolved, uh, and helps explain some of the, the institutions that we have. Um, so the next video will cover that. This was just a brief introduction, and I hope the big takeaways uh, that you get from this uh, is that economics exists because we live in a world of scarcity. We need to determine how things are allocated, where to get them to where they're uh, most valued. Uh, how can we enhance human flourishing? These are the questions that we'll be asking repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again over the course of this semester. Thank you.